Hi, I'm Dr. Bahia Muhammad, Sociology and Criminology Professor and Administrator of Howard University's Inside Out Prison Exchange Program. Created in 1997, the Inside Out Program is based on the idea that incarcerated men, women, and youth, alongside college students, can benefit from studying crime, justice, and related social issues together as peers. This year, Howard held the largest class in the history of the program. Coming up, you'll see the culmination of a semester's worth of instructive and life-changing experiences for all participants. The closing ceremony was held at the DC Department of Corrections in the Correctional Treatment Facility. Welcome to At Howard, Inside Out. This is such a beautiful view. I remember in 2014 when I moved my entire family from Newark, New Jersey down to Washington, D.C. for a position at Howard University. And I knew during that time what I wanted to accomplish, what I wanted to do. I needed a university that was going to be able to support me to be able to give me not only the resources, but the rhetoric and the language and the desire and the freedom in my pedagogy to be able to move in any sort of direction. Howard University did that through the partnership with the DC jail. The only way that we're gonna be able to make a difference, a real difference within ourselves starting and within our communities is together. We started off in 2013 with one class, 17 students on the inside and 15 on the outside. Today we have superseded 400. <laughs> this semester we have battled with so many different concepts and ideas through creative arts, through divinity, through conviction, through mass incarceration and the black family. And the message that we are sending today is that there is room for all of us. There's room for the family. There's room for the incarcerated. There's room for the community. There's room. But we have to begin to stand up and talk about the reality of what's going on with mass incarceration. Not only is it destroying our communities, it is leaving nothing, no breadcrumbs for our babies and for our children. I am forever indebted to the DC DOC for allowing my vision of innovation and creativity to be matched. The only thing that you see of this sort is in Norway, in different countries. The DC DOC has improved their educational components and programming to the T. We were on the juvenile unit with juveniles, and within a day when they turned 18, they were on the Why Me unit. They didn't miss one class. These are the things that we want to highlight to the world and allow them to see that education is key, and education will give you those wings to fly. Thank you. When I open up my mouth, my words cause a vibration. The sound gives birth to the problems that we're facing. My words give power that can heal our very nation and finally put to rest this myth, mass incarceration. I erase stigmas put on us with my pronunciation of vowels and consonants so no statistics can negate this. I heal consonants with my common sense, but they study and practice hatred. And too often is it often when the African is separated from the black culture it created by the white faces of legislators. The new Jim Crows are dedicated to keep you inebriated or locked up behind jail bars as defense attorneys are overrated. We are still broken and left faded by the lies taught to us through slavery. 
but we're rich in desperation, fighting each other over scraps with a slave mentality. Neighborhood watch killing our Trayvons before they turn 18 because they feel the freedom to enforce police brutality. But see, in reality, billions of dollars of education funds get chopped on the cutting boards of America, and they spend more money building and buying weapons because America is scared of us. See, black women, we are children. Our children are being massacred for just going to class. And no child left behind, get your child shot and left for dead. You see, they want to make new gun laws that will affect the safety of our people. Just like the war on drugs crippled the inmate population, and I call it the slavery sequel. Black woman, some things will never be equal. You're sitting in jail paying back a debt to society, but when you get out, you will struggle more because they black box you in all varieties of brown colored skin with your workforce discrimination and your racial incrimination, public housing opportunities erase them. Now you're back into formation, which adds to global frustration. And the Negroes are steady rat racing in the finish line with steady chasing. Bill Clinton calls it one strike, I call it recidivism reformation. Black woman welfare is a ticking time bomb, now five years to detonation. So if you get out and don't have a game plan, eviction and poverty is what you're facing. But a matter of fact, let's dial back to when Georgetown was all black, with these juries that were all white before they introduced to our neighborhoods crack, like when the opposition of civil rights was called civil disobedience or perversion, which gave birth to their law and order. And yes, I'm talking TV version. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Racial profiling, random stop and search ain't random or by call. The police keep searching the ghettos for drugs, but the suburbs smoke them all. Black woman, we take the fall. Small sales, eating noodles and fish tails, using clear toothpaste in our hair for jail, trying to parent through the letters, but see, even that fails because it takes three weeks for mail to go out because they're sending fentanyl through the mail. See, how can we prepare our society with these children, with this society that hates and fears them? How can we teach our sons not to act too black so the police won't shoot and kill them? I now have the privilege and the honor of introducing our Master of Ceremonies for this afternoon's program. Nick Cannon has entertained audiences in film, on television, on record, on stage, online, for nearly 20 years. The talented artist continues to dominate all facets of entertainment as a comedian, a host, actor, writer, director, executive producer, DJ, philanthropist, children's book author, and now instructor of the Inside Out program. He has a passion for our juveniles for our persons behind bars. He wanted to come back and work with those and give those who might not have a voice, a voice. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Cannon. I appreciate that though. And, and truly, I mean, I am gonna be a master of ceremony this afternoon. And that's really just to keep the time because this is it's so many amazing spirits in this room. As you can see, you've, you've heard the, the reason we are here for at least the reason why I'm here, Dr. Muhammad, you heard her speak with so much passion. And then, absolutely. And then you were really blessed and honored to see just a, a, a portion of the, the type of talent and the type of conviction and passion that we have with, with that powerful 
powerful number of the black woman rest in peace, mass incarceration. I mean, how, how in the world am I supposed to follow that? I can't follow it. I'm sorry. I just threw all my poetry away after that. I'm done. We can truly see that the DOC has talent. That's a, I can I can definitely. I've hosted a lot of talent shows, but to see that type of passion and it's just the beginning. You're gonna get an opportunity to see so much more. And like I said, I started, or or as Miss Williams said, I started in this program as a Howard student. Uh, I'm still a Howard student, and but this is now an opportunity where I've been. Uh, able to be a co-facilitator and through so many people in this room I just truly thank you I commend you for all of your work because uh, I'm a true believer in too much is given much is required and we're all in here giving I mean from the family members uh, to uh, the, the staff the administration I always say many people have so many different opinions about our, our justice system they have so many different opinions about where we are today in society, but I always tell people and I always live by that model that opinions never change history. It's examples that change history and everybody in here is an example. So give yourselves a round of applause for, for being a loved one, for being someone who has burdens and getting over these burdens. That's why we're all here to uh, really celebrate reform, to really celebrate the completion and the closing of this process has been an amazing 15 weeks. I had the opportunity to create or co-facilitate and co-create a, a, a program called Art and Justice. And really to be able to give that voice to the voiceless. And you're gonna see many voices today and you're gonna hear many opinions and you're gonna see many examples. And so from that, I feel like I'm being fed as we speak with so much wisdom and so much intelligence uh, that I, have to as you know the co-facilitator I promised my guys that I would start something off just to kind of keep it keep it going but like I said she already done just smoked the mic out so I don't, I'm gonna just say I'm truly inspired by your wisdom by your grace by your intelligence and it's a piece that is called intelligence meets wisdom once upon an element a man named intelligence questioned his own relevance while his new old friend wisdom offered his benevolence. Now, you could tell it was hesitant that they both were a little evident because their respect and reverence to each other was obviously heaven sent. And that's when intelligence said, well, why do we hate? Wisdom's rebuttal, well, why do we love? Intelligence wondered what would become of his fate while wisdom just embraced each day just because. Now, intelligence can prove how much he knows, but wisdom shows how much he grows. Now, intelligence spends its time searching for God, but wisdom knows that time is merely a fraud. Now, odd, they both chose while out on the job to put their pros, cons, and pride aside. Why? Because they both knew that the power of rivals subside if the powerful rival dies. Intelligence was like, ooh, right, right. <laughs> Why? The entourage of the wise decide, oh, my, my. So is y'all body body as you ride or die because wise knew that when true tried to be wise, but it's something about these guys. They could not ever sever ties. Alone they could marvel, but together they mesmerize. See, it's more about the metamorphosis attracted more differences. See, for instance, intelligence is man-made, but wisdom is a spirit. Intelligence is loud, but wisdom must be silent to hear it. See, now intelligence is witty and quick. But wisdom is peaceful and still. Intelligence can be artificial, but wisdom is real. So day and night, back and forth, they could debate term for term, but one without the other, for other quandaries will forever burn. So for now, this wise meeting of the minds has been adjourned. And understand that in terms of the intern, these two terms, the definition of intelligence, the ability to learn, the definition of wisdom, the ability to discern. It's your turn. This is a celebration. This is a ceremony. And we are going to give each and every class a turn to come up here and share their reflections, their testimony, their pieces. And we are going to start off with a student from ethics and politics. Um, please give a warm DOC round of applause. 
for Raymond Dodd. For those who don't know about the Inside Out program, I just want to draw this picture for you and kind of put you in the class setting so you can appreciate what's going on. I hope that when I draw this visual, you can understand what a typical class setting would look like. So in my particular class, every Thursday, we would meet for three hours. After exchanging hellos and small talk, we would assemble into a group circle. Dr. Fish Chu and Dr. Trulia would give out the day's assignment, and we would break off into smaller groups. With the intent of having evenly divided inside out students in those small groups. At that point is where the magic happens. I often took notice that while I was in the class, I felt a sense of normalcy, a break from the everyday day of incarceration. This was because for that moment, I was a college student. That's the way I looked at it. And I was contributing to a conversation that held some type of substance. And so that meant something to me. Engaging in those conversations inspired me in so many ways that I now aspire to be a college graduate. Being a participant of the Inside Out program instills the sense of responsibility in me. As a community, we should not only expect great things out of everyone, but also take on some of that responsibility ourselves. Another aspect, being able and willing to contribute, empowering one another not only to educate themselves, but to also dispel common myths about our communities. I stand before you here today inspired. I hope my words have done the same for you. My name is Raymond Dodd. I thank you for allowing me to hold your attention while I give and lend testimony on the impact of the Inside Out program. I give homage to the Howard University and Virginia Union University for their collaborative effort and commitment to the Inside Out program. This program was established in Philadelphia at Temple University in 1997 in an effort to bring traditional college students and incarcerated persons together in a semester-long course to explore and learn issues of crime and justice from behind prison walls. The uniqueness of this collaborative effort is that it allowed the inside students and outside students the opportunity to dialogue on issues of the day and the conditions in which inside students can speak and dialogue through a particular lens and a sensitive and unique inside perspective they have. Simultaneously, we, the outside students, were exposed to real life versus just textbook knowledge of the justice system and the ministry that we are called to do. The freedom to dialogue and express our views within the compounds of this secure facility was transformational because we were within a secure facility speaking about injustice while our coming and going was restricted and our departure could be denied. For the inside student, it was already denied. The educational and insightful exchange made for bonding and for a moment the facility was a classroom. We were no longer inside students or outside students. We were simply students. Studying a subject germane to the existence of our families and ourselves. The transformation, the freeing of the mind, the ability to speak with truth, uninhibited, was refreshing. And as Raymond said, inspiring. I close by saying that this journey continues for me, and I trust for the inside students and outside students that we continue to educate ourselves and those we encounter, equipping them to address the slippery slope of justice and the prison system, always mindful of the call to assist those struggling with realities of life and helping them to avoid the pitfalls from the beginning. Take heed to the great philosopher Aristotle. He states, it is the mark of the educated man to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Today we must not be limited by what we hear. We must first listen to understand, speak to give sound and accurate direction and purpose in the lives of others. We must parse our comments, for then we can grab hold of the essential and reject that which is non-essential. To the well-beings of the society we live in, my brothers and sisters, let's make a change. Being a part of the system, I was able to step back and see from a different perspective of how the cultures are treated. 
This jail is predominantly occupied by African Americans, so I received the opportunity to get personal experience and knowledge of how devastating the impact of mass incarceration has affected the families of individuals in my class. From the moment the class began, I could feel the energy among everyone. The classroom setting brought every emotion out, the interaction with Howard University, students just encouraged our group to share more. We let our guards down and allowed ourselves to be vulnerable. However, vulnerability can be seen as a weakness in everyday prison life. Dr. Muhammad started to talk about families and asked us to think of words that describe the family. After, we were asked which words describe a black family, a black woman. The only word left was the word soul. Due to the increase of the female population in prisons, especially the increase of black women being locked up, the support and strength of families is being taken away. These, pla these places try to take your character, your drive, and your spirit. This system doesn't want us to connect with each other because we could actually take steps to reduce the recidivism rate. As my classmates started to share about their souls, I realized we all share the same hurt and pain. This class has brought more light to us what, been, what has been kept in the dark for too long. The love, the tears, the overcoming, shared during these circumstances show healing is possible. The power to reclaim our souls and to remember the soul can never be broken. As a PhD student in sociology, we are trained to study patterns in society, social problems and phenomena, and with Howard University being the only PhD program, HBCU with a PhD program in sociology, we are charged with not only providing a critical analysis of complex issues, but also to be engaged in our communities as active participants in the fight for true liberation for all of our people um, and everyone who shows our common struggle. You see, true liberation is freedom not only from the physical shackles on our hands and feet, but the shackles that enslave our minds. This class, these women, the energy, the resilience, and the determination that they have to push through dark times allowed me to see and feel the system of mass incarceration firsthand. How it stifles creativity, how it tears apart families and communities, how it strips away our humanity, and yet we still rise. As an old adage reminds us, roses still grow from the concrete. And through the concrete from which the system tries to bury the masses of black and brown bodies, we still rise, just as these women did and these men, and as they continue to do. Dr. Muhammad's experience coupled with the Inside Out program at an HBCU creates a unique space that allows students to confront the reality of the system that plagues the masses of blacks around the nation. To this amazing class, this beautiful program, these amazing women, um, I appreciate you for sharing your stories with me and allowing me to be in that space. And as my friend Brittany and colleague remind me, she said, when you get in here, you need to sit down and just listen, okay? And I really appreciate that, and I got so much from it. It was so powerful. And as it is the nature of the HBCU, may we continue to build and grow together in the fight towards true liberation. Thank you. This piece that I wrote is called From Africa to America. I wrote it about 20 years ago. It goes like this. They want to kill us all. Black man headed for danger. Born from Africa to this land of a stranger. Over 400 years of overcoming these fears. Just imagine the tears that our peers still shed. Caught up in this country with the white, blue, and red. On top of that, they still wanting us dead. Oh yeah, hurting my head just thinking about all this pain. Plus all my soldiers that's gone, I'll come in the game, I'll come as the same. When we still fighting these devils, we wanna be rebels, but we still selling drugs, chasing these pebbles. What a trick, who's the magician? Think about politicians that make the laws through the week. And by the end of the weekends, they'll be fishing for our conditions that we will never change. Until we change in our heart, then that's a stop because our black race is falling apart. See it clear, 
Look in my hood. Look in your hood. Look in our hood. Can you tell me that it is good when ain't nobody going to work and God said we should? I wish we would so a black man keep his butt out of jail. My mother, our mother, paying our bill with child support on our tail. And what the hell, if I fail, that's exactly the plan that's been designed by the man. So now do you understand? Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin. I'm a junior at Howard and this semester makes four classes for me inside the facility. So I have the pleasure and honor of being not only in the art and justice class, but also a part of the think tank and the mass incarceration of the black family class. And being in all three of those classes this semester, all of the classes are so different, but there are two things that are constant with it, all of these inside out classes. The pure intelligence that fills the classroom when my classmates are talking and the emotional vulnerability that people are willing to share. One of the things that I think is very important about this Inside Out program is that as a student a reading textbooks, you're given all these numbers that go with mass incarceration, the percentages of people that are incarcerated, just the pure numbers. But once you, what you forget is that these numbers actually represent people, human beings. And so being a part of the classes, you get humanized and you learn who these people are that you're reading about in your textbooks and it opens your mind and it changes the way you look at these textbooks and these studies because you're able to put names and faces to your textbooks. So I am humbled and honored to have been a part of these classes and I thank you so much for changing not only my views but my beliefs and viewpoints on everything. Have you ever gazed into eyes so brown that they could be mistaken for a continuation of the flesh? Have you ever bathed in the light of stars so bright that they seem like they're trying to reach you? Gleam like they're trying to teach you? Beam like, yo, I seen the future, son. It's painful like the past. Our father gonna rebuke you, son. Archangels on your ass, so don't be flinching. My nigga, have you ever seen a lynching? Fist clenched, then it's limping. Blood drenched, cause it's cleansing. Fist clenched but not hidden, splitting, spitting bud, spitting bars till we build our own cage, spitting rage, spitting rhymes. I've seen it too many times. You could say it runs down my family tree just like the blood do. You could say they hang my kin to hide the truth just like the mud do. What do, what do, what committed, speak the truth, man, I did it. My cousin admitted so that he'd get legal protection, but my father was the only witness to his lethal injection. And I swear I seen it in my dreams that night. I was there. He was foaming at the teeth, but ain't right, it ain't right. He still had more air left till the air left, air lifted, body bagged, body dragged till he drifted to me. And he whispered, don't cry at my funeral, little nigga, because I'm a demon. Yeah, I pulled the trigger, I ain't even had a reason. Your father ain't believe me anyway, so we can hang when you get hanged. We can hang when you get hung. I saw his body swinging and he sung. A nigga ain't a nigga till a nigga get lynched. A nigga just a demon till his body get rinsed. So I've been all alone, smoking stones in the lobby ever since. So kiss me but once, before my heart turns black. So black that it could be mistaken for a continuation of my flesh. My breath is running marathons while you standing on the sideline. I try to slow it down, but blood racing and bullets flying. Cover your eyes if I start dying. You'll be signing death warrants when you should be signing nuptials. Writing eulogies when you should be writing symphonies. Those brown eyes identifying this body 10,000 times. Once for each black boy on TV whose fate ends like mine. Cold, 16 shots to the spine, never growing old. The widowed wife with brownish eyes. Is this the end? Sin again. And 
Cause I need you to love me now So I can live through the end of the night Just be a friend Yeah Running on the scene, trying to tell me that they saw me. Me and my niggas is clean. Go check the scene, don't got nothing on me. Running in the streets, Nick and Mariah in the valley. Yeah. Can't get nothing on me. Yeah. Smoking loud, sipping lean, just trying to smoke you away, love. Me and my niggas is fiends. I'll drop the green, but just for a day, love. Virgin Mary in the sheets. Mary Jane in the bedroom. These chemicals put me to sleep. I smoke this weed so I can forget you, love. La 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 la. La 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 la. Hey, my name is Christian. I'm the one that failed your drug test. Then you hit me up to see if I could be your plug next. I'm up next, but you can't see me anyway. I'm in the zone. I'm in the way. They said I'm up next. The only Christian that you ever seen. Looking for praise on your knees. Never thought I'd find religion like another Christian on his knees. Trying to flee. I said the town lies deep in the sleep. It's time to wake him, shake the world like vertigo. I call it CPT. I take him with me to the promised land. We never go alone. So hold my hand. I might not make it to the end of the song. The tide shifts when you drain the swamp and flood the valley. Wizards trying to stump my flow. So I go Diagon Alley. And I'll be waiting for you, love. In the heaven for brown eyes. Till then, I'm just going to try and survive, man. My lover, she's so holy that the heathens try to hunt her. Spit a dangerous game like I'm a demon. She's a hunter. I believe the things my mama told me. Never chase the thunder. But if eyes of the storm look like yours, I'm going under. Never face the king I couldn't conquer. Or face the blunder. Or had a queen until I seen her in the frozen tundra. So hold me. It's getting cold. It's getting cold. Hold me because I'm getting old. Well, I know you said he tried me, but you'll always find the light in me. Oh, is this the end? Paint ourselves red and we sin again. Because I need you to love me now. Love me so I can live through the end of the night. Just be your skin. Yeah, yeah. I said a nigga ain't a nigga till a nigga get nigga. I said a nigga ain't a nigga. I ain't a nigga. Said a nigga ain't a nigga. I ain't a nigga. And a nigga is a nigga. But I ain't a nigga. Yeah. Well, This poem is entitled Eyes Wide Shut. What inspired me to write this poem because I wanted to highlight how things that goes on right around us can veil from our vision. I use a lot of symbolism in this poem. Also, I wanted to point out some capabilities that we possess. There's a corresponding quote that defines the first line of my poem that says, the bookkeeper can remain king if the method of bookkeeping can be can be kept hidden or remain a secret. This poem is entitled Eyes Wide Shut. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Knowledge opens your third eye. We magical beings, not just kings and queens. Anytime you take thought from mind, invisible things materialize before your eyes from the world of the unseen. We destined to do great things. Eyes wide shut, I say wake up. There's no time to sleep, no time for cries and weeps. They plot to keep our eyes asleep. Eyes wide shut, I say wake up. There's no time to sleep, no time for cries and weeps. They plot to keep our eyes asleep. Let my pen speak, awaken the dead, give sight to the blind, turn water to wine, uplift our kind. We magical beings. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Knowledge is a key. That means we can fly once we become conscious that there is a sky. Knowledge is a key. That means we can fly 
once we become conscious that there is a sky. A sky with no limit means a mind with no ending. Swimming among the stars. What's up, Nick? Avatars. We descendants of gods. Kings and queens. We like angels with wings. We magical beings. Wars and art. We must be mentally shot to the point we see in the dark. War is an art. We must become mentally shocked to the point we see in the dark. If knowledge is the power, we must become laws of war. Words have the power to create and destroy. The pen is truly mightier than the sword. Let my pen scream and holler. The ink of a scholar is holier than the blood of a martyr. Why me stand up? Why me stand up? Why me stand up? always hated merry-go-rounds. That's what this feels like, merry-go-round. Like someone is spinning us around and around in circles, playing with our feelings as if we haven't been through enough. Ash to ash, dust to dust is recited over our brothers and sisters' lives more than a prayer for a loved one lost, a loved one gone, at the hands of a nation that doesn't love us so. They build us up on lies and deceit, but don't try and stray away, that's when you and prison cells meet. Oh, forgive me. I know my English teacher must be ashamed. Why am I using all these pronouns when we all know the white man has a name? We whisper about the injustices that occur in a nation that was built on the backs of our ancestors, only allowing the situation to affect us as long as the gum has flavor, which doesn't last long. Our crowns are starting to collect dust, so we must take back our throne. We must rise up, taking all of our brothers and sisters with us. We can't just dream like Martin and fight like Malcolm, because Javon had a dream, but they killed him just like my brothers down in New Orleans. So did God when he created every black queen. So then Moses, when he parted the Red Sea, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 states, Don't let them look down upon you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in faith, love, conduct, purity. See, they fear people like me, someone whose melanin is louder than any word she'll ever speak. Mama, to hell with people saying what we can and can't do. Mama ain't raised no fool, and y'all don't let my shackles get too loose. So yeah, I'll lift up my voice and sing, to earth and heaven ring. Bring with the harmonies and rehabilitation of every black king and queen. But not too soon. We must not run blindly into the pits of hell. We must sink into the valley and learn. Learn to love who we are and appreciate who we were, our, who our ancestors were, died and wanted to be. And then, only then, shall we overcome. Thank you. The system sent me to deal with the murderer. I'm leaving when I was a graduate student from HU. Thanks, Doc. The system trying to charge me with robbery. All I took was knowledge. The system trying to turn me into a beast, but I just keep hope alive and remain at peace. The system want me spiritually deceased. I have now been resurrected by the mentors of Wine Me. The system trying to stop me from praying, but I take a right up to pray five times a day. The system, look at us, it's oranges, the numbers, sitting in a cell. I'm turning my orange to a suit, the numbers to a business call, and a sale to an offer. The system would love to see me bending forward, but I'm a man with principles, so let this story be told. If the system is the enemy, I'm planning to win against all odds, so let the game begin. Walking a straight line, victory close at sight, I'm certain I had developed a winner's appetite. The system want to see us with our head down. My head up, as you can see, my high, as you can read, with a big smile as I proceed. Anyways, I'm doing a piece called Rest, and it's basically about mental health and struggling with insomnia, depression, and anxiety. And I performed this um, after one class session and one of my inside counterparts came up and told me like, it must have taken a lot for me to perform this. And so just in honor of that, I'm gonna do it again here for everybody. It go like this. I'm treading water, big headed martyr. That's the ego in me. I steady barter for what the fee could get me. Instead of carving out my deepest entry, I'm dizzy falling off deep seated envy. See what you used to never seems to be complex and that complexity is everything. My feet before my head, 
and blaming steps on symmetry, heart beating in my chest. I'm a real ascetic 17. I seek to see myself in that benighted light more carefully. And by night, my life is definitely privatized. Those diatribes meant for suppressing me. I invite blow steam like iron sides. Your hindsight is 2020, mine's entirely blind. The mistakes I make are highly priced. They amplify by repetition. If ever I turn up missing, oh, my homies got my best intentions. To be honest, I make the worst of the best I'm given. We was born genius, let horrors ease and sing we the mission. If our mission is this, then it is really cruel. That rule of law put petty rule on a pedestal. They ruled us out, the press was cool, but we destitute. Destined and doomed to repeat the things we vexed to prove that we not. When the cash is the object and the passive congrats all have passed from the project. And the masses are dire and the pastors are liars. I imagine a life where I'm glad to be mired with this burden. It's hard to aspire for anything below the surface. Hard to love people for anything besides their purpose. Parts of me thinking this wedding ring feel like a burden. And parts of me don't think, hey. And parts of us don't blink when they hurt us. We done felt some things they deserve enough and gave our bad karma to the next man. Less frantic, bed spanning, dread led to less than and bled panic headstands. It's trying to keep my yes mans around me. We were stretched thin since the grams were stretched out. And family hands been stretched out around me. I stressed out my mama over drugs under my bed that she found. But the skeletons in my closet got my phone number. From this love, we running fast like I stole some. From this love, I'm running fast like I stole some. From this love, I'm running fast like I stole something. But the skeletons in our closet got our phone number. Thank you. 50th and Banks. I'm from 50th and Banks, but I want to come from 50th and Banks. My life. Ligon Hikes is my life. But sometimes Ligon Hikes isn't right. When I go to sleep, I dream about it at night. I ask myself, is Lincoln Hikes just my life? I love it as well as the dirt bike. Hearing all the people outside gives me energy when I hear them bikes. I get a rest from seeing the smoke come out of the pipes. My little brother got shot, had no clue. But where do we go back to? Lincoln Hikes. I said, I'm tired. I'm tired of being in the cell. When I got it locked down, my whole life felt like hell. Hey, Nate, I'm saying, I'm tired. I'm tired of leaving my son when I should be there with him, playing in the park under the sun. Hey, straight, I said, I'm tired. I'm tired of breaking the law. Sooner or later, I know it's going to be my last straw. I said, I'm tired. I'm tired of young black men's statistics. So to make me one less, I'm going to change. I'm talking making the whole 180 pivot. I said, I'm tired. I'm tired of falling victim to the system. So to make a change, I'm going to speak out to the younger brothers and hope they're going to listen. I said, I'm tired. I'm tired of being sick and tired. I said, I'm tired. I'm tired of saying what I'm going to do. Actually speak louder than words on young African brothers. We got to do better, and I wish the best to all of you. Hey, man, I said I'm tired. It's the call of the wild. Say the strongest survive. If we all made a matter, is it the weight or the mind? Doesn't matter if we splatter red paint on each other. If they redline our homes, force us into a gutter. Half of that be Rosa Parks, other half I'm a Rosa. Either fighting for a cause or they change who they are. Accommodate to the streets till they live to the ma. Who think the battle scars of 54 will fall to your kids? They self-love and abolish, find their value in Tim's. Now they quick to pull the trigger on a brother with them. Still no food in the fridge, but we good for a rent. But our family's as broken as the spine of my brother. As they pin him to the ground, pop a vertebrate out. Every block in my town be as grand as Seattle. Pray it don't rain. Junkies need a home too, the skeeky's still going. And just ain't on the news. Now tell me, how could we trust a home that's hiding the truth? If Sandra Bland's murder got swept under a noose. Hello, everyone. My name is Mary Morris. I'm a senior acting major at Howard. Uh, this piece is entitled, Hey Black Boy, I Mean Man. And it's really just a dedication to the amazing young brothers over there and their mentors. And just, amen, clap it up for them. And a reflection of our semester and just a charge to them and everyone in the room that, yes, we make mistakes. Some of us act on them. Some of us don't. But it's about how we render the story after that. And how do we bring our communities up from that? And this piece is for that. Hey, black boy, do you hear me when I'm talking to you? Boy, what I tell you about ignoring your mama? Your mama. I'm not a little boy, I'm a man. 
Okay, man, man, black boy's so quick to tell his mother he's grown, but where's that same energy when the system plays the father role? Boy, you on punishment until parole. Don't you know your role? They offered us knowledge. We had to read between the lines. Instead, we got tricked and did a line. Can't tell which crack, which rock is stronger, the rock or the whip. Whips and lashes turned into who whipped the flashiest, didn't even notice the flash when the feds pulled up. We supposed to be in schools and workspaces, not back in chains, yo, I'm fed up. The demasculization of the black man is going to plan. So enter the space, prove them wrong. Our obedience is like giving Jim Crow a fro. Last week, I told y'all that the richest place on earth is a cemetery. So don't you dare die with your greatness buried inside you. We got to sail on destroyed dreams. A whole case of imperfect ambitions that society told you to put your side. Don't worry, there is no price tag. You determine what it's worth. It's never too late for rebirth. Get out of this daze. This is just another phase of co and tell pro. It's about time we tell this system what? No. So my brothers, Pick up your pen and bleed onto the page. Stain harder than the wounds of Trayvon, Michael, Tamir. Steer new stories into a new direction. New dawn, new day, new life for me, black body. Then allow the power of your pen to prosper into your purpose because I'm tired of swallowing my sentences. We come from a lineage of kings and queens, yet my people keep saying, someday, one day, when the glory comes, it will be ours. No, stop pushing back the day. That's too many days of us being in the days. We must act quicker than right now and sooner than already because the time is now. I'm giddy because we about to take back Chocolate City from the cell block to the streets, but I'm talking Black Wall Street. The only walls we gonna be behind are offices. Officer, no need to arrest. I just need a rest, cause I've been grinding. Elevated by melanin, gave up that sin, chose to win. And it all started with a pen, cooling with a group of powerful black men. Hey, black boy, do you still hear me when I'm talking to you? Oh, my bad, right, right, you said it's black man. Okay, bet. So let's put down the government's toys, get started on this plan, leave them shook like, man. Remind them why I love the black man. Thank you. Awesome. Hey everybody, welcome to our graduation. I said welcome to our graduation, clap it up. Yeah, we made it, Doc. We made it, Doc. Yeah. There's so much energy in this room, I think I can fly. My mind is being stimulated by Dr. Muhammad's radical pedagogical exegesis that is at a state of mental bliss. Nick Cannon's lyrical creativity taught me how to think outside the box, like how the sound of flushing toys in the unit sound like speakers on the block. And just when I thought I was weak, hey Nick, he helped me to see that contrary to pop belief, there's strength in my vulnerability. Man, I think I can fly. The energy level in this room right now is on octane high. All these collective minds and harmonious synergy to uplift a population that looks just like me. Because of you, I am the hottest in the streets. Just ask my mentees. I know you probably heard of me because I ate your LP. When I walked through the door, they like, they were struggling before, but now other programs can't mess with us if they want to. This truth and service, Dashiki Club, Ubuntu. Man, I think I can fly. Before you is a prelude to my aviation. This demonstration of our humanization is truth and service approach to incarceration. Hey, yo, Doc, I can tell by the look of their faces. They feeling our presentation. This isn't Vegas. What happens in this city sets a standard for the nation. Hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished? When I started speaking Spanish, y'all thought I was finished? Soy de negrito con la sonrisa bonita representando la isla bonita. That's Spanish. Je m'appelle Joel. Je suis fier d'avoir le son africain. And Miss Mustry, while lack of a kind of honor, be swaya. Hi, Joe Bujin, will wait swa ye, jing jing, jung goba, that's Chinese. My mind never stops. I'm a hyper polyglot. This time of vacation, this is dissertation. When I leave this place, I better work for the United Nations. Triage. Welcome to our graduation. Just to share a quick testimony and story about. The reason I'm here and the reason why many of us are here, uh, Dr. Muhammad, uh, and honestly, it was the first class, I believe, where we had the opportunity to share uh, with the Young Men Emerging course that we were going to be here today, and we were going to have an opportunity to present in front of our 
loved ones, our friends, our family members, the administration, the faculty, and everybody got really excited about the opportunity of sharing poetry or their gifts of music, rhyming. Uh, and then there was one brother who didn't really speak until this moment, and he asked a question towards the end of the class, and he said, would I have the opportunity on the day of the ceremony with my family? I, I'm so excited about this, but I don't know how I would feel being able to be in front of my family and walk across the stage in this ceremony and taking pictures in my prison guard. You want to see a difference from when you walk into the door with your orange on. He wanted to cap it down. He wanted to be able to do something that showed the pride, that showed the completion. And we felt him. And luckily, through the administration, through the, the strong leadership here at the DOC, uh, they allowed us to do something so powerful to have these dashikis on today that you can see your loved ones, your family members, and a strong guard. So I thank you all. I thank the administration. I thank Dr. Muhammad for coming up with the idea. And without further ado, let's move on to the next portion of our ceremony where you get to see your family, your loved ones walk across the stage in these dashikis. Art and Justice class, Sean Kelly, Demetrius Frazier, Victor Hernandez, Brandon Wilson, Darrell Johnson, Emmanuel Harry, Martique Henry, Joel Caston, Michael Woody, Tony McBride, Tyrone Lee, Traquan Whitley, Herb Anthony, Trevon Simon, Marquise Nabman, Chris Kenny, our Inside Out Think Tank class, Michael DeVilda, Kimberly Thompson, Lee Ayers, Gary Proctor, Willie Glover, Keenan Johnson, Billy Proctor, Marcus McNeil, Demetrius Wilbur, Antonio Silva, Akeem Williams, Anthony Cobb, Bakila Kajela, Ira Adona, Jaquan Best, Jeffrey Bell, Herb Anthony, Nico Gray, Marcus Neal, for our mass incarceration in the black family, Megan Best, Jasmine Thompson, Sonia Garnett, Cynthia Duckett, Maquisha Johnson, Whitney Mauer, Amina Frank, Janice Harris, Izu Dijifa, Ethics and Politics class, Marquise Belton, Raymond Dodd, Rodney Baggett, Anthony Falk, Sinatra Sutton, Justin Collins, Eric Cleckley, David Jones, Terrence Atchison, Jeffrey Saunders, Marcella Spellas, Howard University outside student, Caitlin Aber, Nick Cannon, Marissa Domino, Christian Ellis, Amavi Minder, Simone Perry, Luke Ritzker, Samara Silver, Barbara Young, Jasmine Fleming, Darian Fountain, Randy Melton, Mary Morris, Mason Sales, Marcellus Wilburn, Brittany Gateway, Anthony Jackson, Michael Bell, Kena Damon, Daria Hodge, Sonquia Turner, Brianna Wheatley, Anna Broadman, Dwight Coakley, Linda Johnson, Heather Graham, Alice Bellis, Preston Boyd, David Coleman, Eric Jones, Jeffrey Nicole, Clifford Roberts. So this is on behalf of everyone. Thank you all for coming out today and helping us celebrate the accomplishments of our great men and women here at the D.C. Department of Corrections. 
Thanks for joining us for another edition of At Howard. This program was produced by WHUT, Howard University Television, and made possible by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.